Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. The weekend before a Senate race with national implications, President Trump makes headlines for pressuring the Georgia Secretary of State. We're going to share the shocking audio that everyone's talking about. That's next. And former state senator Pete Lacido replaces disgraced Macomb County prosecutor Eric Smith. Find out what Lacido is saying on his first day on the job. New at noon. But first, topping our newscast here at noon, shareholders approve a merger between Fiat Chrysler and PSA Peugeot. The $58 billion deal with, will create the world's fourth largest automaker, owning brands like Dodge, Jeep, and Maserati. The new company will be named Stellantis, and it will have the capacity to produce 8.7 million cars a year behind Volkswagen, Toyota, and Renault-Nissan. Industry experts say that the merger is built on the promise of cost savings in the capital-hungry industry. The deal is expected to close a little bit later this month. Also new here at noon, the Washtenaw County Prosecutor's Office will no longer seek cash bond in cases. This change comes under new prosecutor Eli Savit, who took office on January 1st. He says the cash bond system discriminates against the poor and keeps racial inequities in the justice system. Savit says that judges will be asked to issue restrictions on defendants that are based on ensuring public safety and not their ability to pay. Washtenaw County becomes the first jurisdiction in Michigan in which prosecutors will not seek cash bail. And with the new year comes a fresh start in many elected offices in Macomb County. Today marks the first day of a new era in the prosecutor's office. Former state Senator Pete Lacido takes over, replacing disgraced prosecutor Eric Smith. Local Force Rod Maloney joins us now live in Mount Clemens with a look at what Lucido is saying this afternoon, Rod. Well, you know what, Rod, I'm here standing in the spot that I was 18 months ago when Michigan State Police investigators were pulling computers, banking records out of Eric Smith's office here in the prosecutor's office. They then went to, shortly thereafter to his home, took out a security system, and even since then, Eric Smith has gone and tried to plead guilty with the feds. That's still in the process. But in the meantime, Pete Lacido says that's something that he's trying to erase and move forward from. I, Peter J. Lucido, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Lucido took his oath of office bright and early this morning, and then the 58 assistant prosecutors who will work for him took theirs. Lucido took considerable time to let the employees who've labored under a dark cloud know. It's a new year. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new beginning for the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office. Make no mistake about it. Many of these assistants worked for former prosecutor Eric Smith, who's charged by federal prosecutors with obstruction of justice after the investigation that started with the use of forfeiture funds and campaign accounts for office parties and other non-law enforcement purposes. If you're going ahead and you've already been bruised or wounded, you got to repair the wound and the bruise and then move forward. Lucido had once wanted to heal those reputational wounds and also wanted to remind everyone it's the taxpayer and crime victims they really serve and that solid ethics are the key to everything they will do going forward. He asked everyone in the office to think back on the ideals they felt when they first took an oath to be an attorney. We represent all people of every walk of life, of every nature, and we want to ensure that they are served in the highest regards of trust. That's all I'm asking. Do your best. Now, Lucido says that he's going to be meeting with everybody in the office. He wants them to take their personal assessments that he had them do so that they can discuss who might go in better places in differing spots in the office, who might be better qualified for things. And he says that it's going to take a long time. It's going to be hard work. But he says this office can move on and frankly, it must. Back to you. Okay, so Rod, where does Foreign Prosecutor Eric Smith's case stand today? Right. Well, he was uh, supposed to plead guilty in his case back in December, but he ended up with COVID. So they've delayed his case now, and he'll be back before a judge, we're told, on January 27th. All right, we know you'll stay on top of it, Rod. Thank you. Right now, we're waiting for reaction from the White House after President Trump's brazen bid to pressure, pressure the Georgia Secretary of State to, as he put it, find more votes to change the state's election results. Tracy Potts has that recorded phone call that everybody's talking about. NBC News obtained this recording of President Trump calling Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, begging him to change election results. I just want to find... Uh, 11,000 
780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. I only need 11,000 votes. Fellas, I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. There's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. The president pressures Raffensperger for an hour, even suggesting that not changing the numbers could be illegal. That's a criminal, that's a criminal offense. That's a big risk to you and to Ryan, your lawyer. That's a big risk. Democrats are condemning the president. I actually wasn't surprised by this call. The president has shown us a long, long time ago who he is. No reaction yet from the White House or the Trump campaign. The president tweeted that Raffensperger was unwilling or unable to answer questions about this. The secretary responded, the truth will come out. On Capitol Hill, a dozen Republicans are preparing to challenge the Electoral College results, and they're facing backlash from their own party. It's not an effort that I'm going to support. The new Congress is scheduled to certify those results Wednesday. President Trump says he'll talk more about that phone call tonight in Georgia. He's headed there for a rally to support the two Republicans in runoffs tomorrow that could determine the balance of power in the U.S. Senate. Tracy Potts, NBC News. All right, Tracy, thank you. And speaking of that Senate race, Tuesday's runoffs in Georgia will decide control of the U.S. Senate and, in many ways, the success of the Biden presidency. All of the candidates are out on the trail, except for incumbent David Perdue, who is sidelined in COVID-19 quarantine. Lane Alexander has this report. Well, Election Day here in Georgia is less than 24 hours away, and with control of the U.S. Senate on the line, it's all coming down to Tuesday and turnout. So that's why both parties are really doing everything they can to make sure that that turnout is as high as possible. So over the next day, we are going to see the big names coming into Georgia. Yesterday, we saw Vice President-elect Kamala Harris hold a rally for the Democratic candidates John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. Today, we are going to see Vice President Mike Pence, President Trump, and President-elect Joe Biden all descending on the Peach State in an attempt to make their closing arguments. Now, right now, polls show that the candidates are virtually tied in this race that really will determine which party holds control of the U.S. Senate. Early voting numbers have shattered records. More than three million people have cast their row to see how turnout is and what happens with these two races. In Atlanta, I'm Blaine Alexander, NBC News. Blaine, thank you. Turning our attention now to the coronavirus. The United States passes 20,649,000 coronavirus cases and more than 351,000 people have died from the virus. These are numbers from the Johns Hopkins University database. And then here in Michigan, we're expecting an update on coronavirus cases and deaths today. It'll be a two day total from uh, from Sunday and Monday. And then on the vaccine front, the new Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine that's being rolled out today in the UK. Meanwhile, those who received the first doses of the Pfizer vaccine are due for their second dose starting today. This is new video out of New York City, a New York City nurse, in fact, who was among the first people in the country to get the vaccine, receiving her second dose now. Two doses must be taken for maximum protection against the virus. All right, so let's switch gears a bit and get you updated on the forecast as we take a live look outside through one of our sky cams here in Metro Detroit. Meteorologist Brandon Roos standing by. We are at 34 degrees to start our afternoon out, Brandon. How cold or warm are we going to get? Well, we started the morning, Evrod, at 33, so we've moved a whole degree and not much more movements as we are stuck in the clouds together and certainly expect this trend to continue. Unfortunately, it's very common for January, but I know a lot of people affected by just nonstop cloudiness. So do what you can right now to prep for your uh, happy place. We have low and middle 30s, 34 at Metro with a southwest wind about 7. So wind chills are primarily in those middle upper 20s. A couple of degrees warmer today, 36. Again, we're stuck in the clouds together, but no wet weather for today. We do have a little bit for your Tuesday, an Alberta clipper. We're talking snow, Evrod, coming up. All right, Brennan, thank you. We'll be checking in with him again in just a little bit. 
An eight year old girl is in the hospital this afternoon after a shooting in Southfield. It happened Sunday night at an apartment on 12 Mile, right in between Cass and Franklin Roads. We're told the girl is in critical condition after being shot in the head. This is video from where it happened. Police are saying that a, a 20 year old sibling has been taken into custody. Now, this case is expected to be presented to the Oakland County Prosecutor's Office. We'll keep you updated as new details become available. Developing here at noon, investigators are back on the scene of that deadly plane crash that killed a Northville family. Prominent home builder David Campo, his wife Michelle, and their son Dawson were coming home from Georgia when their plane crashed into a home in Lyon Township. That was on Saturday. The family inside of that home was able to make it out safely. Right now, investigators are still trying to determine what caused this crash. So to come here on Local 4 News at noon, Iran breaches the nuclear deal. What the nation is saying about its intent to assemble nuclear weapons. But first, a British judge rejects the United States' request to extradite WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. We have the reason that a judge